Most of the European American football leagues in Europe are in the off-season. There's a few exceptions in Spain and France, but the majority of them are continuing to sign players on the daily. The difference between Europe and a lot of the American counterparts are that the majority of the players run one-year deals. Of course, that's not the case for all of them, and we'll get to that in a second, but most of the players sign for one year, and then they might move to a different team. So there's a lot of influx of players. People come, and they go, and they go to different teams. They might spend two years. It's quite a long time to spend at a European team, and then they'll go elsewhere. So the off-season is always an extremely exciting part as a European-American football fan. Because your favourite players might move leagues completely, they might play in multiple leagues in one season, they might not play in a European league at all, or play and then go into Mexico or or back to America, or the IPP. So today I want to grade some of the ELF signings. The ELF is the biggest league in Europe, and they have over 500 players signed. So this one is just going to highlight some of my favourites. Let's get into it. Harlow Kofi is one of those very few players who is on an extended deal. This year, he became the first player in ELF history to have a contract extended through 2026, effectively making it a three-year deal, the first of its kind in the European League of Football. Kofi has some of the best hands, and in my opinion, is one of the best receivers in the league, regardless of nationality. This season, he finished with 46 catches, 805 yards, and a 68.66 catch percentage with 12 touchdowns. In the postseason, he was just as effective, 21 catches for 193 yards, 66.67% catch percentage, and 3 touchdowns in just 2 games. He also won the ELF Championship with the Ryan Fire. Hyatt is an excellent player, he can go deep, he can come short, he has an ability with the ball in his hands, and that is an elite blocking receiver and has some of the best and underrated block in the league. How many receivers do you know that have a pure highlight reel just for blocking? Harlan has a highlight reel that is just for blocking. And I'm expecting him to be one of the first players to go over a thousand yards. He has a lot of support with him in the receiver core this year for Ryan Fire, so whether or not he'll get as many targets as possible is up for debate. But with Jadrian Clark at quarterback, pretty much anything is possible. He's able to work with Andrew Weindinger, the offensive coordinator, and Overall, it's just a massive part of the passing offense. This team does have a run game. It has an outstanding offensive line. And Harlan is going to be an extension of the run game when it comes to his blocking ability. Overall, this one is an easy a grade. Luggy Ogbevan is one of my favorite linebackers in all of the European League of Football. He's a lengthy athlete with positional flexibility on the outside and inside, as well as on the rush linebacker positions. His feet and eyes are active throughout the play, but he does throw his head away from the backfield at times, leaving him susceptible to delayed concept of quarterback scrambles. Outside breaking routes from slot receivers show that his cuts can be a little bit soft, and his trigger isn't in what I would call the elite category. He does have the movement and hand placement to cover running backs out of the zone, as well as the lateral ability and high motor to play on the edge. When coming inside, he can be neutralised by offensive linemen because of the lack of block disruption techniques and pop and initial contact. But overall, his tackling is solid and he wraps well on the legs of the runner, but can slightly over pursue on blitzes. This season, he finished with 87 total tackles, 2 sacks, 8 tackles for loss, 5 pass breakups and 2 fumble recoveries. He is leaving the Raiders Tyrrell and he is going to clone Centurions. He may get picked up for the CFL Global because of his ability to come out of the backfield and cover running backs and his lateral ability that translates well to the Canadian football game. If they can keep hold of Lucky, is an instant A-plus grade for me. He is one of the best linebackers in Europe. He is one of the best linebackers in the league. It's not very close, particularly, and I would have him as my favourite European linebacker. Steven Nilsson, the offensive tackle from the Raiders Tyrrell, moving over to the Frankfurt Galaxy, is going to be the third person we talk about today. Steven Nielsen is absolutely ginormous, 6 foot 7, 320 pounds, length, power, finish, good protection footwork in the pass and the run, he redirects well, he's aggressive, he's nasty, he follows through with his blocks, he can get downfield, he can play at right side or left tackle. If I'm being nitpicky, of course with his bigger frame, sometimes he can lose the leverage battle, but those instances are very few and far in between. This one is the best signing, possibly, of any team, given their commitment to the offense this season, with Luke Zaradka, Platzkama at running back, Malik Stanley at receiver. They need an offensive line to put that all together. Steven Nielsen is that guy to put it all together. You could argue there are not any offensive linemen better than him in Europe. Keanu Ebanks would probably be one to argue. You could have him at one, you could have Steven Nielsen at one. Either way, 
a premier offensive tackle in Europe. Because he isn't necessarily that old, he could be a plug-and-play player for the next five years on this offensive line. It's not really much for question. This one's an easy A-plus grade for the Frankfurt Galaxy. I love this signing, and I think that, for me personally, it's the best signing of the season so far. Victor Omarod Dion is one of my favourite young safeties in the entire league, and I'm expecting him to have a big impact for the Hamburg Sea Devils this season. Last year, he kind of went under the radar, but still did manage a good stat line of 45 total tackles, one tackle for loss, one interception, six pass breakups, four blocked kicks, and a forced fumble. He's effective on special teams. He's effective on the run and the pass. He's ultra-aggressive. There are still some technical nuances that he needs to refine, such as some of his trigger work and his hand placement. But as far as German safeties go, he is 22 years old, and he has sky-high potential. Given that Hamburg lost a lot of their defensive pieces, I see that he is going to get a lot more attention from the DC in making him the heartbeat of this team. He has the ability to be one of the best German safeties in the league. And I think that this year, if the new defensive coordinator can effectively use him, we could see a massive influx in how much people talk about Victor. This one for me is a B-plus grade. There's a round out of four players I'm going to grade today. There are hundreds more for me to go through and if you are interested I'm going to be linking my boards down below onto my quote fee. I'm going to be reducing the price down to about five bucks a month to see my player positional rankings in Europe so let me know if that's something you're interested in. This was a lot of fun to make. I'm an evaluator so I do enjoy doing these kind of videos and I'm looking forward to doing the outside of the ELF and outside of the German Football League and just kind of experimenting with different stuff around Europe. I'd like to get into some of the signings and introduce some Europeans and some Americans that a lot of the wider European audience might not know of. Because there are a lot of players outside the ELF that deserve a lot more attention. If you enjoyed this one, please like, subscribe, share around. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. See you later and goodbye.